In this video, I want to describe how we can use graphical intuition to understand the results of Bayesian inference. In other words, how we can understand Bayesian posterior probabilities in a slightly better manner. And the way in which we're going to go about this graphical intuition is by noting that which we found in the last video, which was that the probability of theta given our choice of data and given our model choice was proportional to the probability of the data given theta and given our model choice, in other words, the likelihood, times the prior, which is the probability of theta given our model choice. And I'm again talking about the same example whereby we've got a sort of population and what we're doing is we are drawing three individuals from that population and we were talking about the circumstance where those three individuals were individuals from a particular tribe in the Amazon. So we started off by thinking about what was our prior in this particular circumstance. And the two values of theta, which we're supposing is either theta is equal to zero, the tribe in which they come from, doesn't have the disease, or one, in which case they do. And we were sort of ambivalent between the case whereby beforehand we didn't know whether to say the individuals or the tribe from which they came would have the disease or wouldn't. So we sort of represented here the two heights, because we're talking about a probability mass function here, as being the same. These are both a half. The area here doesn't mean anything. I've just drawn the second one. Not quite the same way I've drawn the first one. OK, so that's the prior. And so we've got that particular term now. If we now think about what the likelihood looks like in this particular circumstance, so the likelihood here we worked out as well. We said for the case when the individuals come from a tribe which doesn't have the disease, the likelihood here takes on the value of 1 because it's just simply 1 times 1 times 1 for the three individuals. And in the case where they do come from a tribe that has the disease, we worked out that the probability of all three of these individuals, if they are randomly sampled from that population, all not having the disease would actually be relatively low. It would just be, in this case, 1 eighth. So now that we have the prior and we have the likelihood, we can essentially start to compare what the posterior probabilities will look like. And the way in which we do that is essentially by taking the height of each of these two bars and multiplying them by one another. So we take the sort of first two to arrive at the posterior probability for the case when theta is equal to, in this case, zero. So here we take our value of one and we multiply it by a half and perhaps we get a bar which is sort of height, something like this. And then what we do is we take the second two, so then we take a half and we multiply that by an eighth, and then we end up with something which is relatively small, and we get something which is 1 16th. So even though these two things which we found out here, the half and the 1 16th, these aren't posterior probabilities because they don't add up to 1, the relative height of these two things does tell us about the relative likelihood of each of these two outcomes. Because if we compare the case of theta being equal to 1, 1 16th, with the case of theta being equal to 0, the case when we get a half, then in this case we find that we get 1 16th divided through by 8 16th, which is the same thing as 1 over 8. Which, if you remember, if you go back to our posterior probabilities, we had the probability that theta is equal to 0, given our data and given our model choice, we found was 8 9 and the probability that theta was equal to 1, given our data, and given our model choice, was 1 9 So the ratio of these two probabilities would also be 1 8 So really, all we need to do is we need to basically move up each of these bars by an amount such that their area sums up to 1. And that actually amounts to dividing both of these bars by 1 half plus 1 16th, which we've already worked out is actually 9 sixteenths. So if we divide each of these bars by 9 sixteenths, that amounts to increasing the height of each of these bars, and then we'll get to the heights which we had before. So we'll get to a height of 8 ninths for the case where theta is 0, and the height here if we were to go across to being 1 ninth for the case when theta is equal to 1. But I hope that you'll agree that this graphical intuition is quite a nice way of thinking about things sequentially. We start off with a prior, then we multiply that by the likelihood, and that in turn defines what the posterior probability is. 
And this graphical intuition is going to actually be quite useful even for continuous data and also even when we're talking about multidimensional data in terms of multidimensional overchoice of parameters.